welcome to the Aiden Max show. Oof, time just flies so fast. Um, look at the time. We're now in December, December 2nd, and my show is actually being done today on December 2nd, and I just can't believe how quickly time has flown since September. I mean, it's like you close your eyes, and the next second, it's December. I mean, it's it's absolutely crazy. So I'm so excited that this month, December, we're celebrating so many different holidays. It's not just about Christmas. There's Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and a variety of holidays that I don't even know exist. And it's impossible to memorize all of them. But it's so great to have so many holidays, so many traditions. And in December, it's really, you know, your individual preference, what you celebrate. So... I personally celebrate Christmas. It's been my tradition uh, since I was little. And however, I don't, you know, follow by the book. I don't uh, necessarily subscribe to the Bible or anything like that. I just want to celebrate the feeling of, you know, how we got to today, successes, um, celebrating giving, um, celebrating love, and Every day, you know, we're so busy with our lives. Our schedules are so full. I feel like Christmas gives us that opportunity to stop and think for a moment about those special moments. And so it's the love of Christmas and the love for each other that really needs to be celebrated at this time. So that's important to me. And I really want to wish every one of you, whoever you are, whatever you celebrate, that feeling of safety. Please be safe for the holidays. A lot of people like to party and get drunk and then drive and remember not to do that please it's very important if there's a friend in the crowd who is like that don't just ignore them try to take care of them you know um people get so crazy around holiday season like on black friday for example it gets so crazy and busy and people just stampede over each other so don't do that try to take a moment share it with someone else give something to someone else and even if it's someone you don't particularly like just try to share try to take that moment this time of the year and share with them and you know everyone has different situations different issues different health concerns whatever it may be there's homelessness I mean so many problems we experience as humans every day in America it's so important to cherish our lives, to really do an internal cleanse. Whatever grudges you have, whatever negativity, whatever frustrations, try to cleanse yourself of them this holiday season and share with people. Share. It doesn't matter if the person is not your favorite person. Just try to share a positivity with them. It's all, that's what Christmas is all about. You know, sometimes in certain situations we hear stories maybe about miracles happening around Christmas time and it's a good way of, you know, asking the universe or the creator, whoever it is that you believe in, to really put it out there and it's possible for miracles to happen. You you wouldn't even expect them to happen, but when you put it out there, when you keep your mind open, I believe that kind of thing can really happen. So it's really a good month to think of that, to cleanse yourself and start fresh in the new year. So I wish you all a very safe and great holiday season and think of those less fortunate than us and try to give back to them. Now on to Aid and Max opinion. Opinion, I just love sharing my opinion, putting it out there getting involved in discussions, and just uh, seeing how it goes. Are you ready? So, this uh, is about CNN's short digital film entitled All American Family. So, they feature various families in America, and this is, um, it was just so happened that they chose two deaf families. Uh, one of them is culturally deaf, they use sign language at home, they are very much involved in the deaf community. And the other one is very different. Their parents are hearing and um, their son 
is deaf and he has a cochlear implant, so they really select families from all over and all walks of life in America. So it so happened that they picked a family named Petersons, and they are there are various issues that they experience, uh, as we all do. Um, they are all deaf. It's a huge family, and only one member of the family is hearing. It's a, a child, so in the deaf community we call him a, a child of deaf adult, which is a CODA for short. His name is Caleb, and he is, you know, really working hard. He feels that he is deaf, even though he can hear. He just identifies with sign language and with the deaf culture. And a lot of people just um, ask him, you know, how he got to that point. A lot of people don't believe that he really sees himself as deaf, but he really just identifies that way because of his experience growing up within this large deaf family. Because of, you know, just culture and how they behave, there's a very different set of standards and different behaviors that are acceptable in the deaf community that are may not be acceptable in the hearing. So he does not feel like he belongs with hearing people. So he really, really just <clears throat> is a huge part of the deaf community. So it's really fascinating to see this character, Caleb. This is what he looks like. He is a coda and he tells everybody, you know, he shares his the pride of his identity as a coda and he just, you know, he signs, he uses sign language every day. That's his first language. He socializes with deaf people. He um, signs around his whole family. It's a very natural thing for him. So out in the world, you know, he recognizes that there are all these issues, that there's uh, so much discrimination and negative views about deaf people in general, and he shows, he tries to show them that that is not the case, that it's it's a very positive experience for him, that he's just, you know, experiencing this kind of discrimination and learning from it. Uh, but of course, he's not the only one who experiences this type of discrimination, this type of negativity out in the hearing world once he goes out there. I mean, a lot of kids who grow up in their families are pretty shocked to see just how much, um, you know, d discrimination there is out there. And really there are, uh, CODAs are in a very unique position because they can hear, but they still don't feel like they are a part of the hearing world. And they are, because they can hear, they're not deaf. So they feel a little bit conflicted sometimes because they socialize, they, they spend their lives in the deaf world, but then they're, they're hearing. So it's a little bit sad, that conflict. But at the same time, I feel like it helps hearing people to think about how it is that they view deaf people and how they view hearing kids of deaf families that, you know, they can function just like anybody else. So in the hearing community, I mean, a lot of families are no good. A lot of families are dysfunctional. They are not supportive of each other. So you can't really base that on whether or not a family is deaf or hearing. And a lot of hearing children and deaf families have actually been uh, placed in the position of interpreters for the family. So they, they had a lot of responsibility growing up. But nowadays, that is no longer necessary. There are a lot of ways that deaf people can um, communicate on their own with video phones, with relay service. So it's very interesting to compare the old days where a lot of CODA children hearing of deaf families were very frustrated and they felt oppressed um, because of they were taken advantage of or they had other issues. And that is not the case anymore. Now CODA serve more as advocates for their deaf families. So there are a lot of issues. I, I find it absolutely interesting. I'm really looking forward to seeing this um, short film and I really would love for more of these types of issues to be discussed because I think the media is an important channel to show the mainstream all of these issues because a lot of uh, people in in the world don't know enough about deaf people they just have this very narrow view about kind of more of a negative view, a little bit limited. They don't know how much deaf people can do and they really can accomplish a lot. And so this, I think, shows that view, this perspective that is very important. Um, so, and uh, the two things that I'm a little bit disappointed with is um, that 
uh, Caleb's mom was uh, mentioning in one of the interviews, um, she was saying, oh, Caleb is our ears. And I mean, I really don't like that concept. You are fine without him. You don't need a hearing child to be your ears, so to speak. I mean, uh, deaf people can just function on their own. You don't have to think that your child is, is there for you to succeed. So, um, you know, he, Caleb in the movie shares his perspective of like how it was for him that he kind of was seen that way. Um, but you know, this is not something to be proud of that you are your family's ears. It's, it's, it's not a good way to view your child and present your child to the world. You know, everyone is an individual. You all have your own ways of dealing with the world, of seeing the world, of experiencing the world, and they're equally important. So please don't, don't say it that way. I would, I would say to them. <clears throat> so also, um, they are called uh, functionally deaf, so uh, they're among like the, an estimated one million functionally deaf people. But it's, they're so-called functionally deaf, and this this term functionally deaf, <laughs> what does that mean? Like, do you say functionally hearing? So it's the 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 wording there, the language is a little bit problematic for me. So it also kind of uh, perpetuates that negative concept of like what how deaf people are seen sometimes by the media by the mainstream who are not actually clear on what that even means so I, I think it needs to be explained a little bit more so people are aware but here it is that's what I was disappointed with all right on to the next thing everyone knows Derek Coleman um, he is part of the team Seahawks and he was um, He's in football. He's, you know, really out there. Uh, a lot of people know his name. He's pretty visible. And um, he also you know, because of social media has gotten a lot of attention. And um, what's hap happening now is that he was asked to leave the team. Uh, because he was involved in a hit and run accident, he basically hit somebody and took off, thinking that the person didn't get hurt. But the person did get hurt. Um, they had an issue with their collarbone as a result, and so it's, it's very disappointing because he's been such an inspiration to so many children. Um, this one deaf boy wrote him a letter saying, "You know, I'm experiencing hearing loss. Um, you know, my dream is to meet you and." He was, he actually did. He showed up and he met this little boy. So it was such a wonderful thing. And now to mar it with this experience this is very disappointing being involved in the hit and run. And, um, you know, not to stay and make sure the drive, the other driver was okay. It's, it's very responsible. I mean, this should not have happened. And anyway, uh, you know, I am. I just wanted to use that as a, as a message for my viewers to please remember: don't ever get yourself involved in a hit and run, and because it has its consequences, just not a good thing either. But it also has the consequences. He was asked to leave the team as a result, you know. And um, my dream is always to see deaf people succeed, but to now be removed from the team is is such a shame. So I would say, please be more careful. Please know how to approach a hit and run accident, uh, or rather an accident so that it doesn't become a hit and run and just, you know, respect what happens during an accident. Um, so this uh, now has to do with a man named Matthew Pochi. Um, the, there was a parade uh, named the Zombie Parade. It was, you know, for fun. It was kind of celebrating this, like, popular c 
cultural phenomenon of zombies and, and films and everything. They, they kind of walk around eating people, whatever that was the concept. So it was like a, it was a parade that was, um, you know, something that a lot of people enjoy, something that people who enjoy zombie movies, they dressed up and uh, participate in this parade. <clears throat> and the man who was just shown behind me, Matthew Pochi, uh, well, he became involved in the very sticky situation. So apparently he was driving his car and became um, stuck in traffic as a result of this zombie parade. He didn't know what was going on. He was just sitting in his car waiting for these people to pass. He became very uh, annoyed and decided to drive through the parade. Oof. So uh, some people got hurt as a result, some zombies. Here's a, an image from what happened at the parade. I mean, uh, a lot of people also, uh, he was talking about how he got frustrated because he wasn't, um, he was kind of having flashbacks about, you know, maybe people trying to, uh, crowds rather trying to attack his car and, you know, as a deaf person, I guess he, he had a bad experience. So he ended up actually getting off, um, the judge let him go. Um, but you know, he, he, the, the issue was that he wasn't patient. The issue was that he couldn't wait. So he had to go to court. Um, he explained that, you know, he wasn't able, he didn't know what was going on. He couldn't communicate. He, uh, pled innocent and, uh, he was saying that he had bad experiences in the past and that was his excuse. So, um, the prosecutor, said that, you know, he was frustrated and impatient and, um, he, he should be, um, he should be guilty. And that is what the judge decided. So he actually went, ended up going to jail. So that's that. Now on to Aiden Max celebrity news. I have uh, been told that I fingerspell a little bit quickly, too quickly for people to notice, so I am trying to slow down, so that may look a little awkward. Sorry about that. So uh, I'd like to talk about Sandra Bullock. She is absolutely my favorite actress. I have so much respect for her. She's so hardworking, and I've seen her grow professionally from the time she was in the movie Speed, and it was like a... a action film where she had to like run away from somebody I mean it was it was fun to watch but since then I have seen her uh, become involved in comedies and all types of different roles from more funny to more serious so I absolutely adore her and I love her sense of humor and <clears throat> I just you know I have a soft spot in my heart for her so she recently adopted uh, a little girl from the foster system and she's been dealing with the paparazzi and the media trying to get pictures of this girl and her challenge has been that she's trying to keep her child away from this experience. It's like she's trying to cover her up because of course she's such a famous person and paparazzi recognize her wherever she goes and try to take pictures and try to follow her. And it's just already, you know, when you have a child from the foster care system, there's so much unknown. There may be, may have been traumatic experiences in her past. So it's very important for her to, to stay away from any kind of negativity. Um, I mean, it's possible sometimes even, um, children in foster care, if they testify against somebody, that they are placed in witness protection, uh, they are given a new identity. So um, she's really, uh, she really, really, really wants to make sure that her daughter does not get affected by this type of attention. So especially for children, I mean, it's so important that children are left alone. I mean, they're innocent, they don't have, can't make their own decisions to be involved in the media and the show business. So, it, I mean, it's just, she could have been part of a traumatic experience. So it's really, really important in my opinion to, you know, be respectful of that. And so here's a picture of her daughter in People magazine. 
Um, she did give an interview. She discussed her experience adopting a child from the foster care system. She wanted to show how important it is for people to be involved in that, to, to really support children from foster care. And you should read the article in People Magazine. It's really great. I mean, she's 51. She looks fantastic. I really look up to her. So now on to Housewives of Beverly Hills. I absolutely love the, sh the Housewives franchise, all of the shows, the, uh, Orange County, and Atlanta, and New York, New Jersey, wherever, you know, it is that they film these ladies. I really enjoy watching them. I envy their lifestyles, their luxury, their clothing. I mean, to them, $5,000 is like $5 to us. They'll spend $5,000 at a drop of a hat on a pair of shoes. They don't even think about it. Someone on one of the shows just spent like $75,000 on a pair of sunglasses. I just couldn't believe it. It's like people are just, you know, throw it out there like it's nothing. $75,000, here you go. Get a pair of sunglasses. To me, I mean, you know, they're just, I guess absolutely out of this world as far as eye protection goes but still 75,000 you can you know give it to an organization people in need that's that's a hefty amount of money but oh, wow you are so lucky to be able to do that um, and the amount of money they spend on their children it's just insane to me just like to be able to just throw $500 here, $500 there for little kids. Um, sorry, this is going to get cut. This is going to get cut. This is going to get cut. Um, can, you, can you go back and let me see the previous slide? This one. Um, all right, let, let's start here. Okay, next, next one. Go ahead. Got a drink of water. So Housewives of Beverly Hills, oof, it's one of my favorite shows. I always watch all of the franchises. Um, I love their luxurious lifestyle. That's why I think I'm so into the show because, you know, there's so much, you know, rumors, negativity, and immature behaviors that they have. But I still just love watching all the luxury and the, their clothes their jewelry and just like to be able to go to a store and just drop a thousand dollars for something that's that's what their lives are like you know they might go to a store and shoes that are like seven thousand dollars and be like oh sure yeah here you go here's my card go ahead charge my card so i think that type of lifestyle is so we're so removed from it that's why it's so fascinating because to them it's nothing um, to spend seven thousand dollars. I mean, I might if I spend seven thousand dollars on a pair of shoes, I'd have to work another seven years just to buy another pair. But for them, it's like, eh, you know, they spend money as if it were nothing. For us, it's like you know, you count every penny, and it's so hard to you know put it out there. So I am fascinated with all of the Housewives of Atlanta and New York and New Jersey and Orange County and whatever else is out there so um the the dc housewives you know whatever the newest one so I, I just like there's so much drama going on between them and i mean just last tuesday i was watching it was like fascinating um kyle and um um had like these pink sunglasses so 
um, they were talking about, you know, buying them for like $75,000. Like it was nothing. I'm like, yeah, that's what I want. I want to be able to just spend $75,000 on sunglasses to be rich like that. It's like so much, it gives you so much freedom and, um, the ability to do whatever you want. To me, I would rather give that amount of money to improving other people's lives or healthcare or education, just an organization that would work, you know, on that. So to me, it's kind of selfish to, to spend that amount of money on just clothes or jewelry or accessories, you know, $75,000 glasses, shoes, you know, I mean, I don't know. For me, I, I have my standards. I don't need that much, but yeah, I do enjoy watching it. So, um, unfortunately, Yolanda um, Foster, I've been watching her story, and um, she's one of those people who um, couldn't stand fakers and got along with others, and she just recently went through a divorce from her husband, David Foster. So I was surprised because Yolanda always talks uh, so positively about her husband. And um, I know that she had been experiencing some health issues. Oh, I'm like having trouble fingerspelling this thing. All right, let me start over. Let's just go back. Let's just go back to that. Go back to the one? This one. Okay, perfect. So on to Housewives of Beverly Hills. Ah, oh, such a great show. I love following all of these women. I know that, you know, I say it's a great show, amazing show, but, you know, it's more about being fascinated with their lifestyle, how much they can afford, uh, how expensive their things are, how luxurious they are. And to them, it's like not a big deal. You know, someone on the show recently bought shoes for $7,000, and to them, it's just a matter of swiping their credit card, and there you go, you have shoes. But, I mean, I can't even afford the concept of it. And, you know, they might, you know, maybe $7,000 for a car. I'm okay with that. But for shoes, to me, I watch it, and I just go, wow, this is amazing. I mean, that type of lifestyle, to be able to afford whatever they want and, you know, just buy whatever they want, go wherever they want. Do you want to go on vacation? Sure, let's just go to some other country. Let's just fly together. I mean, I look at that and I just go, wow. I mean, to just be able to drop that kind of money is crazy to me. But that's the lifestyle they lead. And that's why a lot of people watch the show. There's also the drama behind the scenes, of course, that everybody watches. I don't, you know, care necessarily for it. But yeah, so it's, uh, I just wanted to feature the story about Yolanda Foster, one of the characters on the reality show. She and her husband are now going through a divorce, um, and it's just moved me a lot because she's one of those characters that I really looked up to. She's sweet, she has a good heart, she really cares about people genuinely, she wanted to help others, she's more of like an outgoing person she's a really great personality and she got along with others more than anyone else so um she also like tries to communicate with people tries to get them to talk she's kind of spiritual and to me you know i guess she's one of the most spiritual characters on the show um the housewives of beverly hills so to see her going through that uh, experience first of all she was 
struggling with Lyme disease and now getting a divorce from her husband, Dave Foster. You know, I think that he has like issues with um, flirting with other women or even cheating on her. So she felt that the marriage was over. So she does blame him for the, the dissolution of their marriage. And um, they were having financial issues uh, because he was having trouble with his job or whatever. And he was dealing with uh, financial issues when in, within the marriage. So other uh, ladies on the show have suspected that she might suffer from what's called Munhausen syndrome, which is um, kind of like a fictitious mental disorder where someone repeatedly and deliberately acts as if they have a physical or mental illness, but they really don't. So that's kind of what her friends thought of her. And that was the, the reason for a lot of their confrontations on the show because she was trying to defend herself that she does not indeed suffer from Munhausen syndrome. Um, because, you know, so to me it was just very uncomfortable that they would think that of her to, to kind of put her down like that. You know, I, I had a reaction to it. Okay, so now on to an inspirational story. It's about time women break through the barriers in sports. I, I think, you know, we've had enough of men in sports. And now, here you go, we have a referee in football named Sarah Thomas, and she is a female. So uh, she's a really hard worker. She has definitely had to deal with a lot of oppression negativity as a woman. Um, and dealt with gender issues, you know, people have put her down because of it, and uh, of course she dealt with a lot of negativity and still made it through, and um, she is now a female referee. I'm really happy to see that. She was able to break through in the field that is traditionally dominated very much by men. Um, that just goes to show that really you can be whatever you want to be, that no wall, no amount of oppression or discrimination can keep you out of accomplishing your dream. So I, I really feel um, it's, it's great. I mean, she's standing there in front of NFL, in front of the world, and I want to kind of take this opportunity to congratulate her on that, that despite you know, any kind of labels that have been put on her. She was able to accomplish it. And now there is a football assistant coach out on the field who is also a female. I mean, I am absolutely thrilled for it. There have been so many obstacles that women have experienced. Of course, we all know that traditionally women have been cheerleaders, kind of cheering for the men out there. But now women are actually go out there and they are on the same footing as men. And um, the assistant coach's name is uh, Jennifer Welter, and I'm just so thrilled for her. And this is such an inspiration to all of us to to be out there and to really be able to be on the same footing as men. And to even have that kind of goal to say, I am going to go out there and be an assistant coach in football. That wasn't even, that hasn't been heard of before for women. But, but now we as women do have these really high, I guess, dreams to something that we can actually achieve. And the, I'm so glad that the football coach of that team was supportive of her. So I, I'm, I'm really inspired by that story. I feel like both of these ladies had broken through barriers to have become a referee and an assistant coach in football, and they are both out there on the field. And to see that is is truly, truly inspirational to sh to show the amazing amounts of work that it took for them to succeed, but they made it out there. Well, thanks so much for watching my show, and we'll see you next time.